Ladies and gentlemen, welcome in to Oz Talk with the Wind Dummies. I'm your host, Lucas Deal. Here with me tonight is the one time world champ, Chris Smith, aka Smitty. What up, Smitty? How you doing, dude? Hey, what's up? I'm doing great, dude. I'm a I've been looking forward to this show all week. We got a couple of great guests coming in later. Opportunity to talk about an upcoming tournament with a couple of TDs. Um, unfortunately, Ronnie got stuck in traffic. Kellogg's terrible at five o'clock. So it must have been a crash. So he'll he'll be showing up a little bit later. Yep. All good though, because instead we have a rare treat for you. All the way from Garden City, Kansas, the Beatrice brothers, Enrique and Luis, they got a tournament coming up real soon, and we're gonna talk to them about it. Let me get them pulled up here. Well, hey boys. What's up, hey. fellas? What up? What up? Luis, how you been doing, dude? Good. How about you? You know, I'm good, but your voice sounds a little bit different. What's going on? Yeah, I got a cold. Oh, okay. That, that makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah. And Enrique, what's up with you, dude? How you been? Good. Okay. What the heck? Enrique, what's going on with you, man? You look different. I've been working out. Oh. And I my beard. Oh, that's it. That's it. You look Dude, at yeah. least 45 yeah, years younger. Yeah, I shaved my mustache and my beard. Oh, you yeah. both did that? That's it, Lucas. That's what's yeah. going on. Okay, that makes perfect sense then. Well, yeah. Yeah. boys, tell us about this tournament. We're excited to hear about it. For the player clock, we're going to have Cotton Candy and um, Dr. Pepper. No! Oh. I love sick. Dr. Pepper. Man. Oh, this is going to be great, man. I can't wait. Anything else going on with it? There's going to be pony rides. Hey, oh, pony rides. <laughs> Ladies Hello. and gentlemen. Hello, everyone. We were just joking. That wasn't live. <laughs> we're just hanging out now. <laughs> that was fun, though. I tell you what, if you did have pony rides, it would help attendance. <laughs> oh, for sure. For sure, big time. Yeah. I'm sure you can find nice. a cowboy out there. I'm sure we can get the college to get their uh, Bronco team out there, maybe. There we go. <laughs> that was fun, though. But... Hello, gentlemen. Um, thank you all for being here. Um, happy to have you on the show. The real Enrique and Luis. Oop, not you guys. There you are. Enrique <laughs> and Luis. Beatrice, hello, gentlemen. Uh, thank you oh, for being yeah, here. I know you, you truly do have a tournament coming up. And I will say there is no one in that Garden City area that does more traveling. And you probably play more tournaments in Wichita than people in Wichita. So we want some people to get out to your tournament and start supporting you all. So tell us about the tournament, man. Yeah, so uh, we have a tournament coming up April 27th in Garden City. Uh, two rounds. It's going to be a C-tier, PDGA C-tier, which is pretty cool. Last year we ran the, our first ever KDGA sanctioned event, but it was uh, just normal, non-PDGA non sanctioned. But it'll be two rounds. On our One round will be on our regular layout. We came out with an alternate layout that we made up for the second round, so it should you know, make it for a fun time. Um, but yeah, we're trying to get as many people as we can. We have 23 people signed up up to this point. Uh, I think last year we had a total of 37. Uh, one pretty cool thing, my brother and I have gone out and we've been trying to gather sponsors. Uh, last year, I think we were able to raise a little over, or no, not a little over, I think about $800 additional cash for pros Dang. and for additional merch for AMS. Uh, this year we were able to raise a total of 900 so far, and I believe there's still one more uh, company in town that's on the fence uh, and giving us some money. So we potentially could have a little bit more than $900. So Sick. that's pretty cool. Yeah. That's, that's great. Nice. Yeah, you Super guys scorable know. course too. Super scorable, especially that alternate layout. It's going to be, I mean, you're going to be getting birdies left and right. So, yeah. so yeah. Maybe some Still ace runs. You never know. <laughs> Still got the old Mach 2 baskets. Oh, oh, you know for it. sure. Yeah, those, you know, <laughs> will, won't catch your discs, so they're not very friendly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Those, were, uh, those were really good when they went in. Yeah. 
big time. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, while we're on here, I mean, I, I do want to thank our sponsors. You know, some of them might be watching us. Uh, Disc Gauntlet out of Nebraska, my brother and I sponsor out of Nebraska. They, they're, they're on board. We have Garden City Optometrist, uh, Buckman Best Behaviors. Uh, my bro- our family decided to put some money in as well. Jamie Fisher and his family from Lakin, uh, our club, Garden City Disc Golf Clubs, also uh, put in some money. Uh, disc Store out of uh, Nebraska. Um, my in-laws from Texas, uh, the Galvin family, has also donated some money for the tournament. The Flying Bison Club out of uh, Hayes, Ron Allen Memorial Disc Golf Course out of Jetmore, and uh, also Pi Barker, uh, Pi Barker Fire and Safety, thanks to Ronnie. So I appreciate all our sponsors for, yeah, thank for you helping everybody. us out. It's awesome. Yeah, that's a that's great, man. I don't I don't have it in me to go ask people for money. That's uh, one thing I just can't do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's it's hard sometimes, but yeah, it's to, worth it to get people out here. Yeah, you you, you have to, especially yeah. out here, out here in Western Kansas. So yeah, so, yeah. and I don't want to leave out uh, Nate Taylor. You guys have had Nate Taylor on the show before. He's been great. He's been. Pretty cool guy, pretty cool mentor to my brother and I in helping us getting things going here out in Garden City. He's also going to be here. He's going to be playing, but he's also going to be our vendor. So Summit and Disc Golf will be out here vending. All amateurs will get a uh, voucher to purchase a disc from uh, from Nate that day also. So he'll be here with some of his stuff. Nice. nice. Yeah. I know, I, know, I know of a carload heading out there. Uh, I don't know how many of them were signed up just yet, but yeah. – um, I think we might have a, a full car load heading your way, so we can't nice. wait. That's that's cool. That's yeah, awesome. That'll be great. Yeah, I saw. Uh, is it is it your your kids, Ronnie, that are signed up for the tournament? Also? I know Nick is signed up for sure. I, Cameron might have went ahead and signed up too. I guess. Yeah, I, I, thought, I, I thought he had, Nick on there. Yeah, that's so we'll have cool. a family event yep. going at it on the MPO card. It looks okay. like for right now until more people sign up. Sounds, sounds like all, it, sounds like all three of his kids will make it. All three of his kids will probably make it. Is Keenan going? Yeah. Easy with all that. <laughs> no, I, I haven't heard. Uh, I think Keenan said Keenan's going somewhere else that weekend. So, but, but yeah, me and me and the two boys for sure. And cool. which I love. I mean, that's pretty easy money for the old guy. So we're, we're <laughs> <That's funny. laughs> good deal. Sure. Yeah, no, I think it's going to be a good time. So yeah. Thank you for uh, having us on and spreading the word. Hopefully we can get, get it full. We're at, 23 out of the 72 possible spots. So hopefully we can get it either full or pretty close to full. Yeah. You just let me know uh, how many divisions you have with three people and I'll just send you those buttons with Ronnie. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, was so, planning on we, uh, making it. I don't need anything for it. So just, I'll just give Ronnie the buck, the buttons and you guys can pass them out. Awesome. Appreciate it. Awesome. Yeah. Right on. All right. Well, well see ya. I, I didn't kick it out. I didn't kick it out. Hold on. They got they got booted. I'm not that rude. Yeah, I'm gonna leave. I'm gonna leave that fast. <laughs> We're at least gonna say bye, guys. Gosh. You're right. Um, yeah. But yeah, no. Thank you. Thank you all for coming on. Um, thank the kiddos for for having some fun with us too. That was that was pretty comical. Had a good time there. So. Um, I don't think I'll be able to make that one, unfortunately, but um, we're definitely going to push this for you. We we want you that guy, guys to have the utmost success for that that tournament. So thank you all for coming on. And also, thank you both for, let me uh, pull this up here, for sponsoring the episode. So Go yeah. City DGC has sponsored the episode. So thank you so much, so much, boys. And uh We'll shout you out the entire episode. Really appreciate yeah. um, all you guys do for the community um, there and how many trips you make to Wichita to play our stuff. So can't thank you guys enough. Absolutely. Yeah, let's get as many people out there as we can, man. These boys support uh, – whole family supports Kansas Disc Golf uh, as much as there is anybody in the state. So love to see a truckload of folks out there. Uh, on the 27th to play your event. That's why I'm headed, man. I, I, I feel like I need to uh, reciprocate the, uh, the travel out there for you guys. You guys, you guys do so much for the rest of us. So I can't wait to get out there and join you guys. I haven't yeah. seen their name on the team challenge yet though. Oh, they need to get, you better get a team in. <laughs> yes. We just cut the price in half this week. So. <laughs> Trying to get more people. So yeah, I'd love to see you guys out there. How about, 
waiting right now. I got my registration app right here, waiting for uh, someone to contact me. So um, <laughs> I'll be signing up really soon. So right on. So, all right, boys. Take all right, care of yourselves. All right. All right. Thanks all right. a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Good yeah. team, boys. Take care. All right. Awesome. There they go. Let's talk some KGA stuff, and then get moving. Yeah. Yeah, let's uh, get some KDGA. Let me switch my background around here so it's not so messed up. All right, let's pull up the KDGA stuff, shall we? I mean, let's while you're pulling that up, let's let's talk about that beautiful hat you're wearing, Lucas. Look at that okay. thing. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, Brendan I, and OTP made this new hat. He actually made one for. All of us, um, the oh. boys just haven't got theirs. Um, and there's one to give away tonight as well. So stay tuned towards the end of the show to figure out how you can get one for free. Look yeah, out. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. Katie GA, let's talk. Just a quick rundown of the uh, top two or three in the open division. We got our guy, Tate Galloway, right there, leading the entire. Uh, Entire KDJ currently with 257 points, followed Second by Schaefer. Not even close. Well, there he is. He's right behind him. I can see him in the picture. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Trevor Wood out of Salina in the open division. So, the battle. Oh, Look at that, that handsome. Guy? That guy is handsome. Wow, that was about 20 years ago. That's when I should have won my first world title. <laughs> That's uh, me, obviously play with the young kids in 40 because there was more of them at 221 points. You better watch that back, Tate, followed by Nate Weens and then uh, Jason Brown. Making a lot of events. I don't that see – uh, I, don't, I don't see me on there. I better uh, <laughs> I better get to going on some KDGA events, apparently. Yeah, have you played any? I uh, played uh, Hip Hop. So okay. far, that's the only tournament I've played this year, man. I've been oh. super busy this spring, uh, but that all changes starting this weekend. Oh, let's go. Love Ready to, to get after it. it. Ready to oh, get who's after that it. guy? Darren Bottom. <laughs> MP50, I think he's won it eight years in a row or something weird like that. That's a record probably, right? Yeah, but most are not. What, I don't remember what it was, but he knew. Yeah, <laughs> it was yeah. one of the questions we asked him when we had the interview on it. He knew exactly how many years it was. Yep, yep. So, I mean, you can see Mosier's behind him just a little bit, and then uh, Todd Potter from the same same area as Darren. Yeah. So, those guys have a lot of uh, KDJ support there in the Marquette, Little River, Hutchison area. It's uh, yeah. There'll be a, be a graphic here in a little bit that's pretty impressive. In that Central Kansas area, man, they 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 get after it pretty good. This is Austin. That's the best picture I could find of Austin. So <laughs> he had zero. In your picture? Maybe. He had Sorry. Zero. Sorry, Austin. Oh, I hope you're not watching this. <laughs> I hope he is. Zero disc golf pictures. Uh, he's out of Junction City. Um, he's just ahead of Eli, who's out of Manhattan. And mm -hmm. Joseph Bratt, who is uh, – Pretty sure Chapman or Junction City, one of those two. So right. our, we're starting to get our membership moving around. It used to all be pretty much out of Wichita and Winfield, and then we're we're starting to spread around the state. There's probably Bill the uh, himself. Yeah, man, probably the best person I have ever helped convince to be part of the KDGA, Kevin Newfeld. He's got 165 points there, beating Pry, who's out of Junction City, and Damon working teen out of a uh, uh, Milton Bell. So, but yeah, Kevin is, uh, he keeps all the rest of us with the KDJ on our toes. And this dude loves numbers and stats. So God, he's so good at that stuff. Yeah. He's, he's fantastic with them, which is why uh, I, I got to call him out. I, come on, dude. So he, he, he was so against my girl, Caitlin Clark. He, he called, he was calling her out nonstop on social media. I saw that. <laughs> oh, this guy, we, we got, we got, to, we got stuff to talk about this weekend, Kevin. Yeah, Watch he, it, buddy. Uh, yeah, he ta he talks some trash with uh, an Excel spreadsheet, which I enjoyed. He's a, <laughs> dude. he's West Side Inman boy. What? Yeah, he's what? Yeah, that's true. Well, I thought 
Yeah, he's he's West. He, he is West Side. You're right. I couldn't remember yeah. what it was. Don't cross that track. <laughs> Here we go. One of my favorite people to hang around with at tournaments, Mike Snyder. This guy, man, as soon as he gets done, he pulls out that chair, fires up the biggest stogie you've ever seen, and enjoys a cold <laughs> brew every time. Him and Big Daddy Dan Dawkins. So, Mike Snyder with 149 points. Dennis Weaver, another one of those Little River type dudes. And one of my favorite humans in the world, Greg Bobo Larmer. Bobo. Whoa, look who's in fourth place. What? Look at that guy. Maybe Kevin's not as good with numbers as we think he is. <laughs> <laughs> Something's fishy there. <laughs> Moving to the uh, amateur division, and two, we got Brandon Birdsall with 136 points. Another dude out of Junction City. Luis, who was just on talking about his uh, tournament, and Robert, who must be Austin's brother, I'm assuming. So, oh, yeah. Eastern Kansas really representing in the points race. That's great. No, no doubt. Here's some uh, upcoming tournaments. Lots of good ones. Lots of fun ones, man. I know Ronnie and I are both headed to uh, this Unlimited Saturday. And then uh, – I jumped into Linear Park today. Hopefully, I'm feeling better by the weekend. I'm really going to be smoked. And then The Rock, chance to play one of the most fun temporary courses in Kansas for sure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know much about what Duck has going on at Andover, but uh, I think it's a two-round C tier. Yeah, I think you're right. And then the uh, – Garden City boys and I are sharing the 27th. I'll be doing the Little Apple Open in Manhattan, and they'll be doing the event they just talked about. And then a chance to go head down to Beloit and play a Chautauqua Showdown with uh, Michael Starbuck and the Beloit crew. Little little chance to maybe get a get a little practice in for the state championships. It looks like playing playing event and get ready for it. Yeah, and. We'll be covering Indian Rock. Disc and Deals will be. So that'll be a fun one. They changed that to a, a two-day. So I'm pretty excited for that because I hear so much good things about that tournament. So I'm excited to be there this year. Uh, have you ever seen it? Never seen it. It's, it's just a temporary oh, thing they put in just for the tournament, right? Yeah, it's got two of the most fun elevation shots in Kansas, depending on how they get yeah. set up. Yeah. yeah. it's uh, you'll You'll have a good time, man. You'll get some good coverage. Uh, that's yeah. That's always been a that's always been a cool one. One one that I always tried to go to, and it's just always at the wrong time of the year for me. Um, but man, who doesn't love the Rock? That hole one might be the 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 most fun hole in the state of Kansas. Uh, when that pond is full, it's for sure up there. The bottomless pond, as they told me my entire elementary and junior high life. That pond has no bottom, they said. There's a crane and a cement truck in it. <laughs> I saw the bottom last time I was there. Well, this looks like a Kevin Newfield special. Oh, yeah, 100% is. He's just showing the uh, the comparison to uh, 2023 and 2024 KDJ member attendance at all of the events we've had. So pretty impressive that at the Camp Hawk event, over 50% of the players were uh, KDJ members. But then look at that uh, Chris Jones Memorial Marquette. 85 players, and almost 80% of them were uh, scoring some KDGA points. Wow. That's crazy. So all except for uh, Park City, <clears throat> over 50% KDGA members. The KDGA is in a really good place right now. No Membership-wise and, and uh, you know, just the, the tour that we're able to offer. We have a – over the last couple of weeks, finally ordered the rest of the shirts that we need, rest of the pins we need, um, some more discs. We ran out of everything at those that uh, kickoff drive. Well, it so, sounds like a good problem to have. Yeah, it kind of is. It's nice to not have to uh, try and chase people down the whole year, but it is what it is. Is my shirt messing with you guys or what? Like this, is this like it's, something it's weird? Yeah, it's uh, it's an optical illusion that almost makes it look fuzzy or moving or something like that. It's 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 a little odd, but you're all right. Oh yeah, it looks cool. How about that? A uh, dis unlimited open man. How when was the last time? I mean, I see there was 99 last year. My guess is somebody had to drop out. When was the last time that thing wasn't full? And and that thing's been full for weeks. 
Yeah. yeah. Control for weeks. I mean, yeah, we can't, I can't wait to get up there. Absolutely. One of my favorite events of the year is, is going to Harrington. Yeah. I, I love Dennis and the whole crew. Interested to see the changes. I've heard there's some changes to the course a little bit. They've made it a permanent course at Father Padilla, um, a permanent 18 or 20 holer. So that's, that's cool, man. I, I can't wait to be able to stop through and, and play that one on maybe some travels too. That, that'll be fun. Yeah. Oh, show. Bo show. All right, boys. Well, I we think ready? it's time. Yeah, I think it is time. So they both, we have. They both here? We got one here. Uh oh. So the <laughs> he's waving. You can't see him, but I can. He's <laughs> waving. He's saying, "Hey, I'm here at least." Um. So our our guest tonight has been a part of Dynamic Discs since 2005. You know. He started the dang thing, for goodness sakes. Recently, he just purchased what used to be known as Emporia Country Club and rebranded it to Champions Landing. Excited to see what happens there. Ladies and gentlemen, the founder of Dynamic Discs, Mr. Jeremy <laughs> Rusko. <laughs> Hello, sir. Oh. Lucas, way too kind and way too big of an introduction for uh, for this evening. But I appreciate you guys having me, and really looking forward to the conversation here. And fun to uh, to catch up on. Um, I'm just going to say all things KBGA related, and it certainly, uh, yeah, um, refreshing to see just the continued growth of disc golf in you know Kansas. And obviously, I remember. Uh, and, and some of my favorite events are, yeah, the Disc Unlimited Open um, and uh, a, a lot of the stuff that the KDGA does. And um, I'm optimistic that uh, I'll be throwing some discs at some KDGA events um, sometime soon. It might be a couple of years, but uh, I'm hoping that uh, I'm, I'm chasing my kiddo around the course Um here in a couple of years and, and support him, but also maybe finding a way to play myself. So Schmitty, be careful. I'm coming after you. <laughs> I'll believe it when I see it. <laughs> <laughs> and Ronnie, I'll leave you out of the I'll, I'll leave out you out of the discussion. So I, I appreciate it, man. I, I I have enough coming after me as it is. I don't need another I don't need another target. <laughs> right on. Jackie not gonna make it. I haven't heard from her so okay well we'll just pretend like yeah if she pops in she pops in yeah exactly yeah. we can we can make it work if she decides to to join all good but i think we gotta start where we always start ronnie let's do it three from the tee jeremy i don't know how, if you've ever caught the show before or or not but we asked the, the same three questions uh to start to start the interview with all our guests so that's what i'm gonna do for you here question number one do you remember your first disc and do you still have it? <clears throat> I do. Um, and I do still have it. Actually, if I, it might be just to the left of me, I maybe should look oh. a little bit, but um, so I was introduced to disc golf and maybe I shouldn't get into the, the weeds on this, but I was introduced to disc golf at uh, Hayes, Kansas, uh, where I went to, um, my first two years of, of uh, college, I did not play disc golf in Great Bend because Great Bend did not have a disc golf course. Thankfully, it has a disc golf course now. I know the, uh, yeah, Schmitty was a, a large part of that and um, getting that thing going. But um, uh, it, it was a Discraft Marauder um, that I bought from uh, one of the individuals in Hayes that had, I think, several thousand discs pulled out of uh big creek that he sold the used discs and I, smitty i don't know you might remember who the guy was i don't uh, my budget yeah. was about 50 cents back then and i i splurged on the two dollar uh two dollar marauder so <laughs> i bet lucas has never even seen one of those no i haven't I'm gonna, but if, i'm gonna well, it's right here if you've if got you it have, jeremy we got we gotta see would this be the first one we've seen after asking about it Ronnie, yeah, if he has uh, I think it would be. Did Dennis? I know, have I have, I know it's in the Is basement there? if it's not in this. But, 
as that was far the one with as the, the, uh, the cowboy list. on the front or something, right? Oh, yeah. 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 I remember it. Shooting backwards. Uh, yeah. Oh, he uh, keeps it wrapped. No, it wasn't. This is a gift from somebody. But uh, anyway, we better go to the next question. I don't have it uh, right here. <laughs> Maybe next, uh, maybe next time you guys are so kind to have me as a guest, I can dig that thing up. That'll be fun. <laughs> Sounds good. All right, question number two. You get, you, you get your dream five. You and four people. Who are the four people that's coming with you? No, oh, round of disco. That's, that's way. Yeah, I can't even answer that one. Uh, anybody in anybody living doesn't matter. And your and your four can get your four can get longer than four too. We've we've allowed that on on numerous occasions. You know, I'll I'll leave. Uh, there, it'd be it'd be we'd have a bus of people. Would be my dream, um, and uh, we'd be having a good time together. So that one's too hard to answer. Um, there's a lot of people on that list, and it certainly would it'd be hard to to limit it to four or or more. Um, but uh, I got to get out there and play some more disc golf soon to get to get on that to to, yeah. <laughs> to get there. Is, is, your, is your, the kiddo making the list? First on the list, right there. <laughs> I saw I you in the, in the green room hanging out. You two, it was pretty adorable. <laughs> well, the funny thing on that is he somehow hit the mouse and un, unclicked clicked the uh, the hide video or whatever it was. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. You probably yeah. meant to, man. Kids are uh, <laughs> he probably amazing did. technology. He's not that smart yet. <laughs> <laughs> Takes after Wendy. No, oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, the questions tend to not get any easier. Oh, boy. Thir the third and final question. Your favorite memory from your time in disc golf? <sighs> Jeez. You're, you're, yeah, I should have, I should have been listening to know that these were going to come. Um, well, your boy, yeah, Eric could have told you, man, Eric came prepared. I've never seen one as prepared as him. He was, <laughs> he was ready to rock it. <laughs> um, geez. Um, let's, let's talk again, maybe before the master's world championships or something. I'm sure there'll be something we need to, you know, um, geez, I don't know there, you know, there's just, there's, so many, I mean, that's what disc golf is all about, right? All the memories, um, and uh, to try to to narrow that down to to one, I think you're you're almost selling yourself short on you know a lot of the things that disc golf's all about. So um, yeah, they're just. I wish I I wish I could. Yeah, Schmitty, what's your? I oh, no, we don't need to go into that. No, I I thought of one of mine today. In fact, I. Uh, I actually was driving along and I just started laughing all by myself uncontrollably going down interstate. I drove by that way station just outside of Ponca where we broke down <laughs> and <laughs> Alan Upshot Brown wouldn't get out of the RV to help us because that's common the weather. <laughs> Boys, we were on our way to Texas and it was cold and icy and we probably shouldn't have been in the RV and <laughs> The RV broke down in uh, Ponca City. We're trying to get to, I think, Louisville or Cedar Hill, one of the two. And uh, we called Kendi up at, it was late. It was probably 10 o'clock when we were rolling. And Kendi drove from Newton, <laughs> Medicine, Ponca City. We loaded up as much stuff in his little uh, SUV or whatever he had. And... I know Rusko was there. I think Searle was there. Me, Upshot, and Kendi all in this little bitty <laughs> thing, back full of discs trying to get to this tournament the next day. It was crazy. <clears throat> one, one of the great RV stories. Was, that's dying weather. <laughs> We've also had an RV that wouldn't go backwards once. <laughs> Oh man, I I just remembered a good one about it. it revolves around a towel, but uh, we're gonna bring that. Up. <laughs> oh, that sounds that doesn't sound PG. We better move on. <laughs> it's exactly what you're thinking. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I oh. I got that's that not my that's not my greatest memory, but that's that. Oh geez, Everybody no, what is? 
what it is, is I took that towel back to him. I don't know how I knew it was his. I think it was an early dynamic disc towel. And I got to him and he, he was just like, oh, thanks, man. Great. And then about four years later, <laughs> we're sitting in his basement with a whole bunch of dudes just hanging out the night before a tournament like people used to do. <laughs> and uh, Big O, Trent, says, is it Smitty? Is it that guy that brought you that damn shit towel back? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> yep, good memory. Ronnie, we're ready to keep moving on. We're ready to keep moving. We're going to get to afford things. <laughs> Well, that's all. That, that's 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 your three from the team. So, yeah. well, before we'll, we'll, we'll we give you some questions, far. it might be easier for you to answer now. Yeah, before we jump too far, though, we do have another guest in the building. Woo! There we, we go. To talk about. So let me do a proper introduction. Probably not needed for for either, but our next guest. A gal who's been with Dynamic Disc since 2015, holding various positions, each becoming more integral to the company. If you've played an event in Emporia, you probably know her. The one, the only, Jackie Mo. Hold on. I got to get her pulled up here. There she is. I don't know if I deserved that kind of introductory. I was very, like, top of the notch. Loved it. Yeah. You know, you know how I do. Here we go. Let me, uh, <laughs> let me get you pulled up. There we are. So both right. of you listed here. All right. Well, welcome in, Jackie. Thanks for being fashionably late. You know, so sorry. We, <laughs> it's okay. All we good. Won't, we won't tell your boss. I appreciate you having me on. Yes. Yeah, we're glad you're here. We're excited to hear a little bit about what you got planned for us and. You don't get off that easy. You get three from the T with Ronnie. That's uh, a yeah. you know, run back through it. Jackie, I don't know how long you've been on, but we've only had one person ever dodge our questions. Oh, okay. <laughs> one ever. So and he's on the show right now. <laughs> yeah. He didn't answer anything. He's like, oh, I can't. No. You just answer a question <laughs> with a question. But you know. That won't work with us. Go ahead. No. <laughs> All right, Jackie. We uh we we start every interview by asking the same three questions to our guests. Okay. Question number one. Do you remember your first disc and do you still have it? I do remember my first disc. I don't still have it. Do you no. know what it was? It was a witness. Okay. Um I got a I think I got a witness, a truth, and a pure from the pro shop in 2015 and I don't have I don't have I don't think any of those discs anymore but I still putt with the pure so I don't know if that's like common for someone to stick with a putter for that long but I have I've been a I've boarding putt- guy for a long time boarding guy yeah. yeah I've putted with the challenger for you know 15 years or more. So I'm with you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. After I miss three, I usually switch it up. <laughs> he changes putters three times around. So he's telling you. Oh my gosh. I don't know if I could do that. Yeah. Okay, Jackie, you get a, you get to have your dream, your dream five, some to go play golf with. You mm. get to take four people with you. Who are you Too taking? Hard. Too hard. Oh, oh my God. Man. God. I have way too many friends in disc golf to just narrow it down. Um, Did he text this to you? This is shenanigans. No, but it's it's true. Um, I've had so many of them just like attend my birthday parties and things like that too. So I couldn't give you five. It would, you know, it just, it would hurt too many people's feelings. I guess they're just way more popular than we are. So we, we're, we're struggling to fill our five and they, they don't want to leave people out. <laughs> they're, they're nicer than us too. Uh, yeah. I love so many of the disc golfers and I've actually gotten to play with quite a few of them and they're just really great. So I don't know. I don't think I can right. choose. We'll let you off the we'll hook. We'll let, off the hook. we'll let you off the hook too. Okay. Only this right. is never happening again. 
How about this? Your favorite memory from your time in disc golf? Favorite memory? Oh, I have a lot. I've gotten the opportunity to do a lot of cool things and meet a lot of cool people. Um, man. I think one of the coolest memories would be <laughs> getting to go to Alaska a few years ago. Um, that was just a really cool opportunity. And I got to help host a tournament there. Um, and I just never thought I would make it to Alaska. So I think that I have a lot of great memories here in Emporia, Kansas, that's for sure. But that was pretty cool getting to actually like host an event in Alaska. That's great. That is cool. Yeah. I saw pictures of that. It looked amazing. Are you, are you doing that again? Um, I am not going to be there, but if you guys know Steven's story, he's been there for mm -hmm. years doing that. Um, and then Derek Savory is going to go help with that as well. Sick. She's got a, mm -hmm. a few other things on her plate, Lucas. Just a few. Oh, busy. She's busy. I'm just going to well, go there right now, though. I said, you want to just jump part. into it, Smitty? Here we I'm go. Ready for this. <laughs> All right. Okay. I got to know. Who made this schedule for Pro Worlds? Um, I worked with the PDJ on that. It was really, really tough getting seven courses for seven pools um, and making sure that the it all worked out correctly. Now, everything's subject to change. I mean, it says on the schedule oh, it's subject good. to change. So, good. That's what I like to hear. <laughs> so, Please you know, just stay tuned. I would uh, strongly advise against putting the MP50 at Cans of View and Council Grove. These guys are old. They can't make it around the course. That course is unforgiving. If the wind is up, you ought to move those guys into Emporia. Everyone, that's the thing. Everyone wants to be in Emporia, but we can't have all seven pools in Emporia. I understand. So, and I'm sure it's a nightmare to schedule that sucker. I think we, I think we tried to get it to where everyone is at least playing one course in Emporia. True. Yeah, I'm playing somewhere so. in town. But uh, we had Brian Schwaberger on a week ago, two weeks ago, and he broke that news to me. And I haven't <laughs> slept since because <laughs> I'm really Do you need some melatonin. <laughs> <laughs> oh, kidding <laughs> it might help I, I've got bad bad memories of that place uh, well we'll make them better okay oh, there it was yeah there she's, was. She's, she's too good at answering questions for you man you yeah, honestly. I, I did do customer service for dynamic for three years so no <laughs> just kidding but yeah we'll just make better memories It'll be fine. I'm going to get there and practice before then. So and I honestly really don't care. Just I like to say I'm a man of my word. And the last time I left there, I said, I'm never playing this place ever again. And boom, <laughs> here we go. You, I think you can renounce your statement if, if you'd like. Yeah, if you're if you're defending champion, if you have to, you have to go back on your work. I'll do it. I'm there. I'm there. So, all right, we ready then? Still, yeah. So, Rusko, I think most people know this story. I know I know it. Ronnie probably knows it. Lucas might not. He doesn't know much usually. Yeah, but... pretty dumb over here. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. Can you I'm give us the, the short version of how this whole DD thing started? Uh, yeah, I probably could take a stab at that. So, uh, 2005, well, I got introduced to disc golf in, um, 2002 at Fort Hayes, uh, well in Hayes, um, when I went to college there, really loved disc golf, but didn't get too much of an opportunity to play it with between, uh, football track, um, trying to get good grades and chase some, chase some women around, um, Ended up transferring to Emporia, caught, kind of caught the disc golf bug there in Emporia, um, had a really good thing going in Emporia, and uh, ended up um, deciding to buy some discs and um, 100 discs from Discraft, bought, chose Discraft because Eric McCabe was a local pro that could actually throw the discs a lot better than I could. 
Um, and that must, must have been a good disc golf company. Bought the disc, put them up on eBay. Um, sold a couple to some local friends, but on eBay kind of started out one disc the first week, another disc the second week. And then it just kind of started the, to snowball from there. Graduated uh, from Emporia State uh, a year later and um, wasn't really sure what to do, but uh, did some substitute teaching, kept the dynamic discs dream alive. And uh, yeah, fast forward to um, today. And there's, yeah, certainly has uh, impacted um, a whole lot of individuals' lives and um, been a really exciting uh, journey along the way and had a lot, you know, met a lot of really, um, really awesome people. And, and truly disc golf is, it's just, it, as, as I continue to travel and as I continue to meet people, just yesterday, I was at a, in Manhattan, Kansas and at, at a banker's got a, a bank director. I'm on, I'm on a bank board in Emporia and I was at this bank director's college thing. And the people that I connected with at, that it just blew my mind that uh, just how small of a world that disc golf is. And it's just so, so I think there's, it, it would be hard to think that there's a more connected, smaller world in the disc golf world where you can like, Oh man, I stayed at his house. I, you know, he helped me out on the side of the road, like uh, the Kendi story a bit ago, he, you know, drove to, to help us out. And truly uh, I, I don't think there's a better disc golf fa or better family out there than the disc golf family that will, you know, truly go out of, um, you know, out of the way to, to do whatever. And I got off track. I'm sorry. So <laughs> that's good. We like off track. We kind of live off track. <laughs> Speaking of that, I mean, could you have ever dreamt 20 years ago, Jeremy, that, that it could be this? Uh, heck no. Um, and I, you know, I, I, yeah, it's been, it's been absolutely incredible along the way. And there's been a whole lot of people to, you know, to, that, that have been a part of it. And, uh, certainly, uh, yeah, it's, it's been unbelievable. And, um, and, and the, and the fun thing is disc golf just continues, even though we're in, I guess you could say a little bit of the, you know, the COVID hangover boom era, you know, disc golf only continues to grow. It only continues to be more professional. It only continues to, you know, impact, uh, you know, more lives. And as we like to say, dynamic this, you know, we're, we're truly enriching lives through disc golf. And, um, uh, you know, it's, it seems to take weird stages along the way. Um, and, and it seems like not a lot is changing every month or every year. But when you look back like five years or 10 years, it's like, holy, you know, unbelievable what, what, how the sport continues to, um, progress forward and just the amount of people that are playing it and the, the, really the amount of money that is, that is getting involved, um, in it. And, um, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's truly amazing. That's for sure. For sure. Wish I was 30 years younger. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I wish. What if you, let's throw one to Jackie here and then come back to Russ in a minute. So, Jackie, is your position basically what Doug kind of did for a while with the tournament stuff? Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, my official title is event coordinator and community outreach. So just handling everything from as small as a clinic with like a group of people to hosting something like Master's Worlds. He couldn't have had much better of a teacher than Doug, mm -hmm. I would say. Nope. I was trained by some of the best. Um, Doug, obviously, just an amazing event coordinator and logistics person. Um, and then also getting to help people like Steven Story and Matt Lloyd, people like that, being around people like Ryan Draper, things like that. Just like, I, I don't think if I went anywhere else, I mean, I talked to golf in college and I didn't know what it was, but like if I would have been in any other company, I don't think I would have had the same um, opportunity to learn from people like them. Right. Well, and I don't think you can sell yourself short. I think uh, you did a lot behind the scenes when Doug was in charge to uh, mm -hmm. make him make his job easier, like finding all the volunteers and yeah, and that schedule. Yep, that, 
think it was 2016 Worlds. He asked me to help with uh, volunteers, and I said, yeah. And so then I did it again for uh, 2017. It would have been GBO at the time. And then he started asking me to do a little bit more, like, can you take on check-in? Can you do this? So I just kind of, like, <laughs> slowly but surely took over things. And anytime we had something to volunteer for in town, I just, yeah, said, yeah, I'll be there and took the opportunity. So. Yeah, that's great. That's sick. Mm -hmm. Pretty good. Yeah. So a question for, for both of you, right? Um, what's new? What's, what's, we, we have a segment on our other show that's called what's popping. What's, what's popping with DD right now? I mean, what's the, what's the newest, the newest news? The newest news that you can share. Well, uh, well, I would say we're going share? through a big transition. <laughs> um, you know, Discmania and Castaplast are now in the Dynamic Discs warehouse. We're, you know, the largest distributor for House of Discs in North America. So that's new and exciting. Um, we are, you know, we're constantly working on it, something. Um, and I know we've got some new molds that are going to be coming out. We are making some transitions and things like that, trying to figure out, like, how to grow disc golf again, all that good stuff. So lots of, lots of changes are happening, but lots of good things to come. I was just looking at the uh, wholesale dynamic distribution the other day, and that's actually how I found the uh, disc mania stuff was in Emporia. But it looked like you mm -hmm. only had the active plastic right now. Eventually, will we have everything? <laughs> that I don't know. I only know so much. Jeremy might know more. I like anything <clears throat> retail and product related. I'm I'm like, oh, uh, ask me an event question or you know <laughs> something about All right. things well, like that. We got we'll plenty go, of those. We'll go to the guy then. <laughs> What's yeah, it, well, so it, it is. There's a lot going on at the uh, House of Disc Dynamic Discs mm -hmm. headquarters, as most people, um, you know, would would think. Um, the uh, the disc mania transition is uh, there, there's a lot in the works there, um, consolidating, you know, to make sure that there's only one distribution point for um, all of the brands inside the House of Discs is, is obviously. Um, makes a lot of sense on, in terms of logistics. If everything is going to be produced in, in, you know, in Sweden and shipped over to the United States, having one point for for all of those, um, you know, products is uh, a lot of a lot of benefit to that. And I think there's also mm -hmm. not just to we'll just say to to us, but also to really the entire disc golf network that's out there because you can order. <clears throat> all those different brands from one, you know, one point of, of distribution. And so uh, I think every day you're going to start to see more Disc Mania products on the website, um, mm -hmm. discgolfdistribution.com. And actually, I think if you were to log in now, Schmidt, you'll see, uh, you'll see plenty more. And every, uh, every day or every other day, I think a, another truckload shows up. And within 24 hours, we're trying to make sure that that gets into uh, the actual product availability. So yeah, there's a, there's a lot of moving parts right now. It's certainly a, uh, uh, there's a lot of individuals that are, <clears throat> that are busting their butt to, you know, help out with the, the transition and really set us up for um, the future uh, there with things. And it's certainly, uh, you know, it's, it's, um, it's tough and it's unfortunate to, you know, disc mania out of Wellington, Colorado, that's been a, a great setup there. Um, and to have to, you know, transition things out of there has certainly been, um, yeah, it's been, it's been a challenging time in, in, in a lot of regards, but, um, there's, uh, there's a lot to, in the long term that's going to benefit from that. So that's, that's. Some of those go. people, some of those people coming from Colorado to be employed at <laughs> Emporia or are you guys just taking it all over? Um, I, I know there were some, uh, offers that were put out there. I don't have the specifics on whether anybody's actually, um, moving or not. There are, uh, the direct consumer operation for discmania.net is, is staying out of Wellington, Colorado. There are other positions that are, you know, continuing, uh, continuing from there in terms of the actual, you know, wholesale fulfillment A lot of those positions are, yeah, it's, it's, they're, they're coming here, um, so uh, we definitely, you know, understand 
it's not that hasn't been a you know a a, uh, a great situation over there but um there's you know again there's a lot of a lot to look forward to in, in the future just some some short-term um you know pain points there that uh we're we're working through yep we'll see how it all shakes out over the next <clears throat> couple of years right see what yeah, happens yeah. here and there yeah right on well should we talk some ddo yeah, yeah. Let's talk DDO. Let's talk DDO. Don't, don't, I, every time, every time you say DDO, it's ten push-ups. So Smitty, I'm gonna need you to do ten. Oh, it's true. Lucas, I think, I think that might have been two. Now. It's GBO. No, now. it's GBO. We changed it back. It's yeah, no, it's DDO. Dynamic disc open. Dynamic yes, disc. The dynamic open. Oh. disc open. Okay, I got it right. No, you said DDO. <laughs> ten more. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. Well, regardless. Unless, <laughs> unless you have to say it like 10 times in one sentence internally, that's the only time you can say DDO. That's, that's right. Well, <laughs> I'm going to tell you guys right now, I just started calling it those three letters that we can't call it because I was so used to calling it those other three letters that we called it for so many years back when mm -hmm. it was in its heyday, back when it was the greatest tournament in the world by far the most fun you could ever have yeah. in a week of disc golf so we're still gonna have a lot of those great traditional things that was up that was were at the gbo so yeah because i just remember when i when i went to my first one i hadn't played a ton of tournaments so i'm like okay i'm gonna do this and then i just remember just being absolutely blown away by the players pack and i'm like whoa now my question really is, is that kind of taking more of a back seat or, or are people just spoiled now? You know, I just, I'm trying to figure it out. We as disc golfers, are we just spoiled because we had so like, it used to be like such a amazing thing. And now if it's not like up to par, like everyone just hates it. You know what I mean? So <laughs> what are your thoughts about the players pack in general and how that's, that's gone through the years? I think everyone's definitely entitled to their own opinion. Um, but I think it's also hard for tournament directors to try to come up with something too that someone hasn't already received. Yeah. Um, so each tournament director is going to think that something is really cool. You know, um, well, we still try to make sure that the value of the player pack is like, you know, above and beyond. Um, the value of like the tournament entry on top of everything else that's going on in Emporia during that week. You know, you've got the block party and the poker party, putting competition and things like that. So those are extra things that kind of kind of count as a player pack. Um, but I think you have a lot of people too who just don't want player pack items anymore um because they some of us have been in the sport for so long they don't want any discs um they want some i don't know what they want a lamborghini i'm not sure but it's you kind of have to start looking at okay they're paying this much i can't give everyone a car things like that um mm -hmm. i think it's just it's just dependent on the person who signed up and the tournament director themselves yeah i i do think though it also there's a part of it where we as consumers are so much pickier than we used to be. We used to just be happy mm -hmm. with, oh, you gave me that. That's amazing. Now we're just, we have so many options and people just get so dang picky with every single thing that I think your job in making a player's pack is <clears throat> extremely difficult. So can be for sure. Yeah. And it's, it's kind of like, um, you're going to try things and it's either going to work or it's not. And then next year, We'll try something else and that's all you can continue to keep doing is just trying different things can, can i add a touch onto that um just to you know this golf has changed so much in the last 20 years and jackie mm -hmm. you answered it, it really spot on but you know when i look back at the last 19 years of this golf that i've been a part of uh which maybe you can go way further back than, than me but it almost felt like you know 
<laughs> that long ago, you almost had to like incentivize people tremendously to come and play your tournament. And you had to show them that you were providing that value. And as we were building the brand for dynamic discs with the glass blown open, one of those things was to make sure we had incredible player packs and really wowed everybody. And we really, in a lot of regards, we did too much um, and, and it wasn't sustainable. And when, and then, you know, you, you kind of got to at some point figure out what the, what the happy, you know, medium is there. And when, when you look at uh, other, you know, if you go run a marathon or run a, run a race or do a, do a bike race, you typically pay like $50 or a hundred dollars or more and you get a t-shirt and maybe yeah. a water bottle and somehow disc golf and dynamic disc was a big part of the problem. We give, we give it all away. Like, Oh, we want to, we want to charge you $50 for a tournament. We want to give you the best experience you've ever had for a day. We give you two rounds of disc golf in most cases. We give you, you know, a great experience, and we, <laughs> you go to a bike race or a, you know, a marathon. You work your butt off. You go do that thing, and you're and you're gone, and you don't get a you don't get anything when you cross the finish line, other than maybe you get a, a beer or you get a, you know, maybe a meal. Um, and with disc golf, we just do so much to make the experience just above and beyond because mm -hmm. that's what disc golf is is all about. But you know, every year it seems like we're transitioning a little bit away where tournament directors are understanding that, you know, things are changing. My, my time is worth a little bit more than actually nothing. Um, and uh, I, I and it has to be that way. Right. I mean, there's a lot of expenses that go into these tournaments. I, you know, mm -hmm. what, what, what do we put up for the Dynamic Disc Open? It's a couple hundred thousand dollars ahead of time to make sure that we can. Yeah can run the tournament and we hope that, you know, we get that much money back in. And um, I think I'm getting on to a little bit of a tangent, but <laughs> we give a lot out for disc golf to provide an incredible experience. And I, I think that people are starting to appreciate and understand just what value a tournament director and a tournament brings to the players that are there. But I think we still got a little, a little ways to go to, um, you know, really kind of find that happy medium, I guess I'll say. Yeah, I, I think that's a, a fair soapbox to be on um, and probably needs to be stated. So I appreciate that. One of the things that always got me a little bit at this tournament and other tournaments is when you give this awesome players pack and then the first 10 dudes that get it are throwing that dang thing on Facebook or something and selling it for <laughs> three times more than what it's worth. I mean, that's one of the ways that disc golf has – changed for the worst over the last 20 years is there's no reason to not play am you can go win a stack of frisbees and triple your entry fee with just a little bit of effort compared to back in the day that you want am here's a bag of discs you don't like them trade with that guy over there and see what you get. <laughs> so and dynamic discs is a uh, I remember the first time you said, yeah, we're just going to let them, we're going to have all the discs out. They're going to come and pick. And I was like, oh my God, this is the worst idea I've ever heard. <laughs> so, I, uh, I love organizing tournaments. I love running tournaments. I absolutely hate payout with a passion because every single person has something to do that's more important than what you have to do. So they're trying to cut in line. They're trying to stash by this here. Oh, I just hate it, man. So if if I could get by with doing a player's pack only and here you go, thanks for coming, I would do it. But I know as soon as I did that, nobody would come. <laughs> or she can provide a different kind of incentive and a different kind of incentive. <laughs> it's tough. I don't know. Maybe. Then they'll come, right? Well, they're going to come to some of these tournaments regardless. And, and to your point earlier, Jody, yeah, I mean, I think it's, I think it's about time that these these folks that that do work hard, like Jackie and, and, and Smitty, and the folks who run these these golf tournaments for us all over everywhere, get a little something for their time. You know what I'm saying? Because um, for so long, that was uh, more 
more of something you just did because you wanted to do it. You you were getting nothing for it. You were you were spending a whole day, and uh, often hoping to break even, right? So, um, I I think that 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 change is long long overdue, and and glad to see it's finally starting to happen a little bit. Yeah, I tell you what, man, you have to have so many, you have to have so much stuff to pull off a tournament now. Back in the day, you just mm-hmm. had to have just a little bit and everybody was happy but no now now if you don't have a a blue 173 fusion raider you're the worst td ever <laughs> although the event went off without a hitch <laughs> it's tough man it is tough I always, got I always encourage people like if some they don't see something in the player pack they like and they're like, oh, I would have this instead. I always just encourage them to consider tournament drafting themselves. <laughs> like, oh, like you should do that in your player pack. And I don't mean that in a bad way. I'm like, I'm legitimately like, you, y- yeah. Like, if you want to see that, I think you should do it too. I don't know. And I, you're so, you're so much more eloquent at it than me. <laughs> I'm just like, <laughs> I'm like, do it yourself, then, guy. What's bad with you? <laughs> So, all right, I got one. 2018 was the last time I played the GBO or DDO or Dynamic Disc Open. Your event. 10 push ups. I'll get them. I'll get them afterwards. I'm going to do one and put it on a, a gift so I can just push them out. And in 2018, we had 1,395 players. That may have been the last year everything was together. Mm hmm. And then we split it. And mm-hmm. I think the focus was the Pro Tour, right? That was a. Yeah, we did. There was like one year we had GBO, and then it, we had to cancel during COVID. Um, 2021, it was just the Pro Tour came back. No, 2020, just the Pro Tour. And then in 2021, we did it together. 2022, we did it together. 2023, you did the split. I just, X. I just think that so split many years just kicked us in the butt, man. I think, uh, I think it hurt a lot of people's feelings. I'm mm-hmm. not gonna lie, I was a little mad when it split and there was no age protected. I mm-hmm. didn't understand that at all, and that made a lot of older dudes not happy. Rightfully so, I kind of feel like. So, yeah. and then this year, out of nowhere, just like- one night, just boom, we have age protected. Mm-hmm. And I thought for sure that thing was going to just take off. But there's only 30 age protected players. Yeah, there are. I was hoping for more, but yeah, I there was like some ruling and things like that. And then we were practicing for Worlds and then... That's why last year I wanted to just give back to the AMs um, because we pretty much focused so much on the pros the few years before. Um, And then, yeah, this year I got a lot of asks for age protected and I was like, okay, let's do it. So I did it and we just, yeah, we have 30 people signed up, which is, I could understand though, because we are hosting Masters World. So if you're having to choose between doing one or the other, I understand that. Right. I, I was gonna. I was gonna ask that question. Do you think? And and I am playing. I'm playing both. But um, do you think that that had an effect on at least the 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 bigger travelers on on not being able to play DD? Oh, oh, I almost said it. I don't. I, I can't do ten pushups anymore. So I better call it dynamic. <laughs> <Yeah. disorder>. uh, <laughs> Just uh, jumping jacks. There we go. I could probably handle that. Well, maybe we don't want to do that either. Yeah, um, your shoulder, watch out. Uh, do you think that kept the the my age folks, the the masters pros, from playing DDO and and not going to uh, uh, as instead Did of I am just open. <laughs> I don't know how you do that. I, I I don't think I'd be able to. That would be. It's ingrained in my brain. Man, that that's hard. Uh, <laughs> because worlds is coming just two months down the road i think so i also think we're just in a different time too with money being tight for a lot of people 
um, people needing to choose to spend their money on specific things. Totally get that. Um, traveling expenses, hotel expenses, things like that are going up. Yeah. So of course I think people are, some people are going to either have to make a decision or um, swing both and then not be able to take like a personal vacation or something later. It makes sense. I mean, that makes yeah. sense to me. How's, how's registration going for, uh, for pro for masters worlds. I know we're only a couple weeks into, uh, into the registration. Mm -hmm. period. Um, I think we're only like on tier two. So it's going good so far. I mean, people are signing up, um, but they have different tiers for their registration. Like sent out invitations, amateur mm -hmm. side open, and then the professional side is going to open soon. Oh, I that, yeah. Hey, uh, PDJ mostly handles that. Schmidt, if I can backtrack just a touch, Jackie answered quite well on yeah some of that previous decisions on splitting up the event, and I you know it, it was really 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 hard to continue to run such a large event with so many people involved with so many tournament directors. Uh, we had a lot of stuff going on and um, we made the decision that we wanted to focus over the, the quality of the event, over the quantity of the, of the event. And I think we might've swung a little bit too far in terms of, you know, splitting the events up. And we certainly recognized and realized that you do need to have both a bigger, you know, a bigger event. I think we're, we're stepping back in the right direction with uh, the, the size of the event that we're going to for, for this year, for the dynamic this open. Um, and I guess I'll be hopeful that we can uh, pull this year's event off and feel really, really good about it and continue to expand it and grow it from there because you're right. It was, it was the coolest disc golf event, the disc golf <laughs> festival, um, the biggest party in disc golf. And, I think that we need to um, bring that back, probably not every year because it's really hard to do, um, especially when you're hosting like a world championships or a master's world championships, or, you know, we, we do a lot of events in Emporia and, and Jackie and the team are, are working really hard to make sure that, you know, we can keep pulling those things off and all of the, all of the staff that, that pulls together to make it happen. And so, um, yeah, I think that we're, you know, we've learned a lot over the years and um, I think there is, um, we're building that momentum up to hopefully uh, continue to, um, you know, put us back in that that fun that fun spot where uh, a lot of great things are happening in Emporia. And I think you know one of the, the the best things about this year's event is that everything is in Emporia, and so you're not driving more than seven minutes <laughs> to get. Um, from one place to, to the other and that, you know, everybody mm -hmm. is in Emporia mm -hmm. and uh, yeah. I think that's pretty special and, and it's going to be for everybody that's involved, it's going to be a, a great year. And I think it's going to be kind of that re restart to, you know, those future things really building in Emporia with the, uh, with the event. Yeah. I think um, another thing, two people just don't didn't realize is like when it would rain in like um cottonwood falls and that pool would then not be able to play three rounds and everyone else in emporia who had their rounds here like things like that got really tough um yeah. but like to go on what jeremy's saying we're doing a lot of cool things this year too we are we're doing the poker party we're doing the putting competition we are we're working with radius on having like um, a kickoff party we're inviting pros down to the shop to do signings like the pros are going to be there this year everyone's going to be together some really great things and we just we need attendance there to like let us know that we need to start growing the event again. Um, we I know we had a player cap of 550 this year um, with three pools, and I think we have 360 people signed up. Plus plus 120 MPO men plus 30. Yes. So you you're, you're still women. over you're still over 500 people, which is a lot of people. yeah. Mm -hmm. Half I mean it's half of what mm -hmm. we used to have, but I wonder if one thing that's kind of working against us is when th that thing was 
2018 when it was the greatest thing ever. It was the only one. There was no other mm-hmm. event mm-hmm. like that ever. And yeah. now, you know, you see what Ledgestone does. They're probably going to have 8,000 people or something crazy. And That's so, crazy to me. From a logistics standpoint, my brain goes, what? <laughs> how many, uh, do you have any idea how many volunteers you had the year that you had? All those people, 1,300, did you have 600 volunteers? It wasn't 600. It was probably somewhere like um, – 150-ish, between 80 and 150. Um, I know we were usually stretched thin in places and, you know, trying to get people exactly where they needed to be. But, yeah, it wasn't 600 volunteers. That would be awesome. Yeah, but even over 100 is a ridiculous amount to, to mm-hmm. do that. And, and you're just scheduling people in different places. Oh, and then hoping they show yeah. up. Yeah. yeah, hoping they arrive and – and stick it out because yeah disc, disc golfers be. might be the nicest people on earth but <laughs> sometimes they're not the most reliable people on earth. <laughs> <laughs> so, right on yeah <laughs> well boys should we play a game a game <laughs> i'm ready we always we always <laughs> play a game don't worry you'll beat lucas hey Shall we play a game? Shall we play a game? Shall we play a game? You get a you get a bonus point if you if you can if you get the reference. I don't know, and I've heard it eight times. No re- no <laughs> bonus points <alone. laughs> It's Ronnie's favorite movie. It's not my favorite movie. It's a good movie. The his favorite of all time. <laughs> it's yeah. from War. It's from the movie War Games. War games. If it's is it a scary movie? Yeah, you're 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 scary. certainly not old enough, so Okay. <laughs> it's, not, it's not scary though. For the it's record. an old guy reference. No, it's not. It's a, it's actually a uh it's a really good movie. Check it out. It's, you you probably find it. All right. How can VHS. I <laughs> <laughs> That's probably not completely incorrect. All right, so I did some research. And I was uh, looking back through the historicals of the GBO and Dynamic Discs Open. And uh, <laughs> whoop, there it is. <laughs> it, it, it only took you 20, 30, 40 push ups to get it figured out. <laughs> Man, I might not make it to, uh, to the Dynamic Discs Open because of all the push ups. <laughs> um, no, you're going to be a better player because of it. No. Or, ret- or retired, one of the two. So, uh, I found 14 champions of the event between the, the GBO and the Dynamic Disc Open over the years. So I ask the four of you, and Jackie, ladies, will go first. Name a champion. And we've had three multiple-time champions in which we'll gain you two points. Mm-hmm. Jackie, you're up first. I can name a champion or just one like at a time. Just one, just one at a time. One time. Okay. Male MPO champions. We're doing male right now. We are. Okay. Paul Macbeth. Paul Macbeth is a multiple time champion. Jackie gets two yes, points. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. Five times <laughs> champion, I believe. Wow. Great work. Jeremy Rusco. Uh, we'll go Eric McCabe. Eric McCabe is also a multiple time champion. Two points for Jeremy Smitty. Rick. Ricky Wysocki is a one time champion of the event. I just knew that's the only one Lucas knew. No, I know another one. <laughs> Lucas. Um, Eagle. Eagle McMahon is a one time champion. That's right. That's right. I'm on the board. Jackie? Are we still doing MPO? Yes. Forever. We've got four of us. Okay. For forever. Okay. <laughs> um, well, do uh, Parker Welp. Ooh. Parker Ooh. Welp is a one time champion. Pull. Good pull. Mm-hmm. And current reigning champion, Jeremy Rusko. Yep. 
Uh, I think on a, I don't know if Will won once or twice. Maybe he didn't win at all, but I, th- I feel like Will Schuster won at least one. Uh, Will Schuster is a two-time champion. No, he's good. Two points. This guy. Uh, this guy. Nitty. I should probably save this one for when we get down to the nitty gritty. Oh, you're yeah. thinking of the same one I'm thinking of. <laughs> that I'm taking it, Cam Todd. <laughs> yeah. Man, I was going to say that. Dang Cam, it. Todd. Oh, Cam Todd is a one-time champion. Oh boy, oh. this is Lucas. This is where I get a really struggle. Um, I think here. Yeah, you're about. I'm just. I'm looking at the names. You're about done. Yeah, I feel like I'm done. Um, let's go. I don't know. Did Nate Doss ever win? That is the luckiest guess of all time. <laughs> Nate <laughs> Doss is a one-time champion. <laughs> that is that, so that was, lucky. He had no idea. Oh yeah, that was a that was a big <laughs> year when he came. It was a that huge was year, yeah. Jackie. I can't believe Smitty took Cam Todd from me. Um, Simon Lazat. Simon Lazat is a one-time champion. Impressive, Jackie. No misses yet from the group, but it's. I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. It's going to get a lot harder now. Jeremy Rusko. Once it gets back to me, I'm done. <laughs> Smitty, should I take the? Should I take the lefty? If you want it. Did you take? Did you go into a playoff that year? No, that wasn't with. So, a name that very few would know at this point, but Dave Hemmeline. Hemi, Hemi is a one-time champion. Would have not known that one. I got a, I got a double pointer here. Oh, Daniel do Stacy, Danny Stacy. He was one twice. win, was a champion, finished second in another in another uh, GBO. Only a one time champion, but really? correct. Yes, maybe sir. he won it before it was GBO and then came back and won it. At may, GBO. may have won it when it was uh, Emporia Open. Hmm. Remember, he only won one on old eighteen. He birdied old eighteen on. West, that was the most amazing shot. Do you have any comments that can help me out? Or no, get going. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Uh, there's, there's, there's only three champions uh, that we have not named, which okay. is uh, impressive. Okay, we did decent. I did decent. This is really good for me, but I'm gonna go ahead and miss one now. So let me think. Um, what about? Um. Yeah, I don't know. I can't even think of someone. I don't want to make a bad guess. So we're just going to go ahead and strike this. First miss goes to Lucas. Thank you, Jackie. Um, Kale. Kale Levisca is a one-time champion. Uh, that, that was, was actually the last year I played. Uh, I used year. to Dang. look at the. I used to look at the people on the thing in the store every day. <laughs> That's when hole 18 was the uh, island. Hole one was down the hill. Yep. Yeah. That mm-hmm. was the last year I played GVL. That was, that was 2011, either 2010 or 2011. Oh, wow. All right. Oh. We've got two left, Jeremy. I, one of these is the, not the, hard. The, the OG from OK has not been mentioned, right? Didn't he win? Are, 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 was that a was that a guess? All oh, Ron Con. Ron Converse Ooh. won the very first glass. Yeah, I was say him. Nice. The correct. Was that the easy one? That was the easier. Well, the I, I'm I'm no offense to Jackie or Lucas. They have no chance to get the, the our last <laughs> our last one. Jackie got to stare at names though. I don't know I if did. I'm gonna get it. How about uh? That's- that's the reason I knew Cam Todd's. How about gonna... Dave Felberg? <laughs> that is Dave Felberg has not won the <laughs> the D, the GBO or dynamic this open. I'll, I'll give you two a little bit of a hint. Well, I'll tell you what, I, I ain't giving Lucas a hint. I'll give Jackie a hint. Okay, sure. Um, let me go ahead and guess. Sure. 
The sucker Googled it. I can tell. If he gets it, we'll know. I'm just joking. I have no clue. <laughs> Jackie, the, our, our last contest, our, our last champion now plays at least in the, I think he might play in the 50-year-old division. Oh. He's old. I don't know if he's quite Smitty old, but he's at least me old. Um, Smitty, you should oh. know this. Uh, you said the 50s? I think he's he might be 50 at this point. I'm pretty sure he's 50 at this point. Pretty sure he used to be from Oklahoma. Now he lives out east. Uh, McCoy? Kevin McCoy. Got it. Yeah, hey. Good so snack. good. So good. What a great well, You guys got all of them, and only Lucas missed. I missed. <laughs> Not only do ladies, but <laughs> only Lucas missed twice. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> what was the score, though? Jeremy won. Ah, yes. Jeremy, Jer Jer Jeremy ended up with 10 points and five in uh, six guesses. So that's pretty, pr or sorry, Ooh. eight points and five guesses. That's pretty, uh, pretty solid stuff. So. Seven points. I'm sorry. Seven. 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 Seven points and five guesses. Pretty solid stuff. More the fact that you guys got all of them is Im what impressed me. I, I didn't know if anybody would get Emmy. Who got I last? Gotten that one. That's what I'm concerned with. Who got last? Last was certainly Lucas. Yeah, <laughs> easily. Certainly Lucas. As 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 per the normal. Thank you. Wow. Thank you. <laughs> so, well. Hey, I just got to know one more thing. Tell us a little bit about this champion's landing. What's going on out there, Rusko? Let's hear it. Yep. Oh gosh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's 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 uh, it's been pretty exciting. So uh, Emporia Country Club uh, now champions landing um, private country club for the last. 113 years and certainly the, uh, the country club model um, does not work in a community the size of Emporia and actually as I was in Manhattan yesterday I you know heard that even the Manhattan Country Club seems to be you know a struggling model uh, even you know right now and uh, so anyway um, it uh, yeah purchased um, country club at the uh, February 1st January 31st and um, converting that into a, uh, a a place where the entire community feels welcome to come out. It's open to the public um, for golf, for disc golf, for fishing, for uh, walking in the morning because those cart paths don't get enough use from um, golf carts right now. Uh, restaurants open to the public. We've opened. Um, it's uh, we're referring to the uh, the sports bar as Champs Bar and Grill opening up a coffee shop called Champs Coffee, opening up a, a kind of a more fine dining experience um, and what we're referring to as the landing. And um, there's some some opportunity to hopefully capture uh, and putting more emphasis and more focus on, on um, disc golf. And obviously that's where uh, my heart is and where my passion is. And um, Jack, you know, you guys all know, I mean, it's, you know, we've just been, doing the minimum that we could out there. Well, the maximum, but we were always, you know, restrained because, oh, well, the, you know, the ball golfer, the traditional golfer might not like that. And, or, oh, that just doesn't work here. And um, quite frankly, that, you know, the, the stuff in the past, you know, doesn't work today. And I think that there's a lot of opportunity to um, really look at the, the property with the a new set of eyes. We're not doing, um, you know, any real drastic changes necessarily this year with things learned a lot about, uh, a lot about the property. Um, there is some opportunity to potentially get some, um, Kansas, uh, tourism and, and entertainment type of, uh, funding to help grow, um, Emporia and the facility into more of a tourism and entertainment destination, which, um, the state of Kansas obviously knows the importance of disc golf in, in Kansas and what an economic impact that makes not only for Emporia, but, but for the state of Kansas. And um, there, there's certainly some opportunity there to hopefully get 
a substantial amount of money to, to redo the golf course, redo the disc golf course, um, you know, build the world's largest disc golf basket, um, build uh, at least what would be, in my opinion, the first true real like putt putt disc golf course. Or, yeah, you know, you got the windmill and you, you know, you got to putt through the windmill. You got the swinging basket. You got the up and down. You got the headwind putt. You got the tailwind putt. You name it, keeps going. Um, and uh, yeah, just do some kind of some cool things out there. It's been really refreshing to see the community come out to um, to the property um, and and enjoy it. And the uh, the number of people that yeah step foot inside the building and say, "Wow, I've lived in Emporia my whole life, and I never knew this was here." Like you know the actual like the restaurant or you know the facility. Mm -hmm. um, and so the other the cool thing about that is how many more people are going to get exposed to to disc golf because of that. And um, I actually, I'm not a, a big believer in foot golf. I think foot golf is somewhat of a little bit of a kind of one and done thing. But um, I think foot golf needs to be out there because if you put and, and you do the um, disc mania has a multi um, sport deal where you put the basket kind of in the middle of the, the foot golf um, target. Uh, or goal, however you, I should probably get the terminology of that. How many people might come out there to play foot golf that actually then they're like, wow, I actually want to try playing disc golf. And you have a beginner friendly disc golf course out there. And so um, I'm hopeful and optimistic that we can turn more people on to disc golf uh, through that and continue to make Emporia a, um, a disc golf destination that, or even more of a disc golf destination. And um, hopefully, give back more to, to disc golf. And uh, yeah, it's been a lot going on, but uh, excited for the dynamic discs open and um, welcoming uh, the pro tour back to, back to Emporia for that. So I'll quit talking. I think that was enough, huh? <laughs> good. That's good. Yeah. I just, you had mentioned um, you're going to start playing more soon and that does not sound like you're going to ever play again. <laughs> <laughs> uh no no i i no, i i can i can you know get get that golf cart out there and throw some discs and yeah That's so <laughs> i gotta go i gotta go check the course now so i got an excuse <laughs> <There you> go. <laughs> excuse me right, well we definitely appreciate y'all being here um smitty did you have something to say there nope i was just gonna try to wrap it up okay all right well well, again, thank you all for making it. Um, this was awesome. Um, thank you for everyone watching. And stay tuned, everyone, for the giveaway and how you can uh, be a part of that. Um, but we'll let uh, Jackie and Jeremy get out of here. Take care of yourselves. Thanks, Thanks for coming guys. on. Thank you. Thank fun. you so much for the opportunity. Appreciate nice it. Thanks for coming. See you yeah, guys in you guys. a few weeks. Absolutely. I'll be there. You know it. Okay. Awesome. You know it. All Keep right. up the awesome work, guys. Thank you. Thanks, man. Yeah, Jeremy. Bye bye. All right. So let us let me move hey, some things around. I'm just gonna tell you guys, I'm not doing those push-ups. Well, well, we uh, we we, <laughs> we 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 don't have to spoil it. We'll we'll we'll, we'll tell them we did. They, they, we'll tell them we did. We, hold on, hold on. It's, it's, it's not lying. It's not, not pushing. <laughs> Sorry, Russ goes just in the background making. Whoa, hey, hey, you're supposed to get out of here. Get out of here. <laughs> he was right. Uh, yeah, he heard that, by the way. Uh, <laughs> busted. You better do those push ups. No, 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 no. Hey, you're going to do them next time I see you. I'm going to make All right. Them. All right. Deal. Deal. And Lucas, you too. And Ronnie. Okay. Yeah. You got it. I, I yeah. do owe you something. I got more than I can do. I'm going to have to split that up over about the. I'll tell you what. The next time you come play a tournament, I will do push-ups. Oh, <laughs> hey, hey, that is fair, and I can't wait to. Uh, I can't wait. I might be too old to do it by that time, but I'll do all I can. <laughs> no, you won't be. No, you won't be. I hope see. Thanks, guys. Hey, you guys. Right. Thanks, hey, for buddy. Buddy. See you guys. All right. See you. All right. That was fun. <laughs> yeah, man. That's a good show. I think, boys. Yeah, that was a good show. So we do have a, a giveaway though that I want to talk about. So in order to get be a part of this giveaway, how many we still got? Yeah, we still got everyone here. So we got this wind dummies hat we given away. So all you gotta do, just do the normal thing, which is share this out. Um 
let people know we 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 doing a lot of this stuff and we want people to to hear this i mean that was a really fun interview and that is from again this is from brendan at otp so if you want any type of design he can do hats now this is new for him he can still do shirts and designs and um tons of different things so hit up brendan Kuntz. he's your man but there's also another giveaway because you know the Beatrice boys, they can't just come on here and sponsor the show without giving something away. So they're also going to be giving away a disc. He sent me a picture, and there it is. It is a Heimberg Tour Series Draco. Ooh, that thing looks spicy. So again, just share this out, and we will have a giveaway on the next show. I have some shirts I'm still going to be giving away. Look for a post on that coming out soon. That was from our last episode. But yeah, share this out, and that's it. That's all you got to do. And you can win a, a hat or a disc. And other than that, boys, I think it's time to wrap her up. Anything you want to share before we head on out of here? If you made it this whole time, man, I appreciate you sticking around watching this. I know I had a blast. I love talking to people. That was fun talking to Jeremy and Jackie. Um, yeah, good luck at your tournaments this weekend. See most of you in, in Harrington. Yep. Yeah, looking forward to seeing everybody out on the road this weekend. Um, and uh, get out there to Garden City and support those Beatrice boys in that club out there. They're doing some good things. Uh, come out there and see if you can't take on me. I'm, I'm, I'm ready for all comers. Let's go. Yeah, you don't have to play his division, but you can just look at him. Um, now it'd be a good yeah. time, man. It's gonna, it's gonna be a good time out there. I hope we get as many folks as we can out there. For Me, too. Guys. They, Me too. They're 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 awesome, and they support Kansas Disc Golf so much. Um, I really hope we can we can we can help them get some folks out there. Yeah, and we got got some nice things. People saying, "Aaron, peace and out." All right, y'all. We're gonna get out of here. We'll catch you on the next one. Remember. The, uh, the second Wednesday of every single month, you got Oz Talk with the Wind Dummies. We hope to see you then. Take care. Bye-bye now. Later. <laughs>